I will show you how to represent text textual requirements in, in a SysML model, how to formalize them, relate to your design elements and perform automatic design evaluations and requirements verification. Okay, let's start from, uh, from the sample model. Here I have a, a, a typical uh, vehicle system and a couple of blocks like engine, transmission, uh, wheels and, uh, and the braking subsystem with the brakes consisting of, of the uh, disc, caliper and, and braking pad. And in, in my more detailed view, uh, you can see that I, I have some typical, uh, some initial values of my uh, properties of, of my parts. And uh, my goal is to, to prove that the values I have in my design um, satisfy uh, requirements I have. So currently I have no requirements in my SysML model. My requirements are defined and described in the Excel spreadsheet. So I, the, the, my first step is to show you how to uh, transfer those text-based requirements into, into a, a SysML tool. So first of all, we should uh, prepare a model and create a new package for requirements. And let's create a requirements table, which is a tabular form, a tabular representation of requirements, similar to the spreadsheet. And uh, initially, we show uh, standard uh, system requirement properties like ID, name, and text. You, you can customize and add more. And also, you can customize columns, order of the columns, and make sure that the columns order match uh, columns you have in the Excel spreadsheet. And if so, you can simply select data text in, in, in a spreadsheet, copy, and just simply paste that into a requirements table. And select the requirement type you want to create. And you see uh, your textual requirements are, are automatically converted to the to the SysML elements. Uh, on the left side in, in, in model browser, we can see that uh, requirements are represented as elements. And because they are elements now, they, they can, can be represented in, in, in different kind of diagrams. Uh, so you can uh, relay them to other model artifacts and model elements and, and do more detailed analysis. So let's do this. Let's create an analysis package. And create a BDD block definition diagram. I'm going to show my requirements here and side by side to my design. Okay, select and drop requirements into, into the diagram and you see now you see that another uh, representation uh, as uh, so requirements are represented as boxes with the ID and text inside. And you can also show some uh, structural elements or blocks here in the same diagram. And, and by the way, the requirements can be uh, can be imported using uh, uh, different ways. So that it's 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 okay 
if you if you have text based requirements on the web page or in your email or or spreadsheet and, and you have all those matching columns uh, you can simply copy paste but uh, typically, we have more requirements in, 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 in the requirements management tool. So uh, you could you can use uh, uh, a requirements interchange format then to export them from a requirements management tool. Most of, 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 of all major tools support this uh, format, RecAF format. So we can export the requirements and use this file import menu in, in the Cameo Systems model to import them into a system model. So, so after after uh, having them in, 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 in your model, you can look at your design and see if you have enough uh, uh, blocks or properties uh, to, to satisfy those requirements. So let, let's look at the requirements we have here and, um, and properties we have in, in, in our vehicle block so I see that uh, there is a requirement for the vehicle weight and uh, also a requirement for stopping distance. And if you have a, a property in the vehicle uh, representing stopping distance, you can use a systemal satisfy relationship and say that and stopping distance actually satisfies the uh, stopping distance requirement. And uh, my, my weight, uh, uh, gross weight uh, property satisfies my, my uh, legal weight requirement. If we look deeper into our design, And see, we have wheel, then we have a tire, and we have brakes, and the rotor, and the pad, we can add more such filings. So here you see that the rotor uh, diameter should satisfy uh, this requirement. And say pad width should satisfy uh, this requirement. And the more requirements you have and the more blocks you have in, in, in the diagram, this activity becomes more, more and more complicated. And so there is a number of view uh, and diagram uh, designed, to, especially designed for this activity. It's called a satisfy matrix. So let's create one. Here you can select what kind of elements you want to see in, in your columns and, and what elements in the row. So let's select uh, your blocks uh, for the rows. So my scope is my structure and the uh, element types I want to see. Uh, I want to see the valid properties here. And for the columns, my scope is my requirements package, and I want to see the requirements. See, the, the matrix is automatically generated. Okay, let me resize. So I see all the all, all, all requirements I have in my requirements package. And 
can see uh, three satisfied relationships I previously created in, in, in my VDD diagram. And here, actually, you see a summary. You can immediately do a gap of coverage analysis and, 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 and see if, that, for example, my, my heating requirement is not yet satisfied in my design. So let's, let's look at the heat property in my pad and click on the intersection of this uh, row and the brake heating requirement. So, so I can click and automatically create a satisfied relationship. Okay. So vehicle weight is here. Clicking in, in, in this matrix not only uh, changes, uh, creates those arrows here, but actually uh, creates the relationships in the model. So if you uh, go back to, to the requirements diagram, you can also show the same relationships here. So for example, big heating requirements. If I Click and say display paths. It starts showing my satisfied relationship created in, in the matrix. Also, if I switch to my tabular representation, I can select additional column here and show my design properties which satisfy requirements. Okay. So so far so good, but we have those satisfied relationships, but requirements are defined in the English text. So how could I satisfy how could I verify that uh, let's say this stopping distance requirement is satisfied? And uh, let's say I have some uh, uh, numerical value of the stopping distance. How could I automate? How could I use my computer and automatically verify the value against the requirement? Uh, English text is not enough. You don't have an English text interpreter. So the next step is to formalize requirements. Uh, and uh, in our approach, we use a seasonal constraint block to define English text-based requirement. So let's say, let's create a, a stopping distance constraint. and uh, use a refined relationship. Let's say the, the stopping distance constraint refines my textual requirement. And uh, here we can use more formal uh, mathematical expression and say that, okay, if my yes, speed equal to 60 and uh, distance is less or equal 180 my requirement is satisfied you can do the same uh, for the vehicle weight requirement Let's call it uh, weight constraint. Okay. 
Wait. Shall be less or equal to two hundred. And uh, use a refined relationship. So my constraint refines my textual requirement. Now we should find or define an appropriate context to use and evaluate those constraints. So let's take a vehicle and create a, a specific uh, testing vehicle, a uh, specific subtype of vehicle. Let's call it a vehicle under test. And uh, create a system parametric diagram for analysis. It automatically asks me to uh, select existing uh, uh, properties in, in, in the context. So I'm interested in, in uh, speed and stopping distance and weight properties here. Okay, and let's drop some constraint blocks. weight constraint and the stopping distance constraint. The next step is to, to bind my system properties and, and constrain them, bind them to the constraint parameters. So let's take the stopping distance constraint. I need a speed and distance. So let's bind speed, vehicle speed, the speed variable here and the stopping distance to the distance parameter okay. and the equal weight to a weight parameter or another constraint. Okay, so now, those, now those two requirements are ready for automatic verification. Uh, if you're using Cameo Systems Modeler or Magic Draw with the Cameo Simulation Toolkit installed, you should uh, see a Run button. And if you click this, you can evaluate the design. Look at the variables panel, and you can immediately see that uh, my you can see a vehicle instance uh, with all parts and, and properties initialized. So that's my uh, default system design, and you can immediately see that uh, uh, the weight of the vehicle is in in green, and if you point mouse on the value, you can automatically see uh, the traceability to requirement and, and read the requirement text. So you see that the uh, vehicle shall be uh, vehicle weight shall be less than 3200 pounds is satisfied. And my my uh, stopping distance uh, requirement is not satisfied. We defined it as a uh, we, we, we are requiring uh, speed to be equal to 60. My default speed is 65 miles per hour here. So let's change this to, to 60. And uh, stopping distance, it is not automatically calculated because we don't have such a, uh, such a, uh, we don't have a system behavior uh, or uh, analysis model yet. So, you could check uh, stopping distance of your vehicle by testing a real uh, vehicle prototype and enter value here. So if you enter, let's say, 150, 
you see that it's, it becomes green. That means requirement is satisfied. If I enter 180, it's still satisfied. If I enter 181, it's not satisfied anymore because its uh, distance is more than required. Okay, that was easy. But uh, the problem with this uh, stopping distance requirement is that uh, it is related to, to a particular speed. So, for example, if in real life, if, if speed is 55 or 65, I don't know if my requirements, uh, system requirements are, st are still satisfied or not. And in real life, requirements are more uh, complicated. So, for example, if, if I look at my Excel spreadsheet, I have a number of uh, stopping distance requirements. And in, 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 in this time, uh, my initial speed and, and stopping distance requirements are defined in, in a table. So it, it, it has uh, numbers of uh, required stopping distances uh, and depending on the, on the uh, road condition. And, uh, and so some stopping required stopping distances are on the dry surface and on the wet surface. So, how could I check uh, my uh, design values against such kind of requirements? Of course, I could I could represent this table in, in my model somehow and then check if my uh, stopping distance uh, with some uh, pre uh, predefined initial speed uh, matches. The values in this table, but the problem in, in here is that you you can see that uh, you have only 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, miles per hour, and and if you have uh, again if you have like 65 or 55 as initial speed, you don't know what should be the value. Uh, if you represent the same data in a plot, you could approximate and. And, and, and look at the you know intersection so look at this axis and uh, find 60 65 and look at uh, this plot and and then you can approximate or estimate that the stopping distance should be like uh, 180 or, or something uh, and you could you could treat this as a function um, of the of the initial speed and the stopping distance, and uh, using some math tools, you could you can actually uh, create such a function. And you can see this function here. And I'm going to use this function in my um, parametric uh, model. Okay, first of all, I, I, I want to uh, copy and paste this requirement into my requirements table. So, okay, let's create a new, new requirement. It's called uh, stop distance table. Function based requirement text here. Okay. Then go back to our requirements analysis diagram and represent this new stopping distance requirement here. Let's replace our previous stopping distance requirement by this new one. Okay, let's see. 
my stopping distance property satisfies this new requirement. And I have this uh, uh, stopping distance function in my model already. So let's look at this uh, constraint in more detail. So I have a um, expression saying that the stopping distance shall be less than the required distance, and then the required distance is uh, calculated using uh, function, which is a function of initial speed, uh, road condition. And then I have a, a Boolean property for the verdict. So I can I can store my uh, verification result here. And I'm going to use this constraint block to define my requirements. Now, now go to the to our uh, parametric diagram, vehicle and the test, and replace our previous constraint by a new one. Delete it, and uh, drop new one, and connect bind stopping distance and, and speed again. Press run button again. Uh, you see uh, vehicle system initialized. Again, our initial speed is 65. Let's change this to, let's say, 60. And let's say my stopping distance, my actual stopping distance was uh, 160 feet. OK, it's red. It's not satisfied. If we look at the, our plot or table, and let's take initial speed 60 miles per hour on the dry uh, surface, which is uh, default, it should be 150. So let's let's try 150. We see it works. If it's 151 is, is, is too big and, and the requirement is not satisfied. So we can we, we just prove that this function uh, is precise enough to, to, to represent the requirements uh, from the table. Uh, okay, but still, I, I need to enter stopping distance manually here. And it would be nice to find some uh, equation which could uh, estimate my uh, vehicle stopping distance from, from the values uh, of my uh, braking system parts I have. I have such function in, in MATLAB as a MATLAB function, M file, so it can um, calculate my, estimate my stopping distance using uh, uh, several parameters like uh, vehicle weight, initial speed, uh, uh, diameter of my wheels and uh, friction and, uh, and braking torque. So I, I 
I could use this MATLAB function directly, but that's a topic for our uh, for another demo and webinar. We'll show how to how to integrate uh, math, math, math tools you have and and call uh, custom or standard functions directly from the system models so, and, and use them as a constraint blocks. Uh, for for this demo, I simply co uh, copied and pasted them those uh, uh, equations into into a system open same block. Okay, I have this in my model already. Drop it into, into analysis diagram, and you see that that's the same. Uh, uh, equation from MATLAB. Now I should display my deep nested uh, vehicle uh, subsystem properties and, and define them to the parameters. <laughs> right click on diagram, go to related elements, display parts, and select properties you want to see in the, in, in the diagram. Okay, so I don't care about the engine, I need the number of wheels uh, and some wheel subsystems. Okay, I need tire diameter. Action. From the brakes, need a braking torque. Okay. Let's use some auto layout. Okay, it's a bit better. Let's move this constraint here. And let's start binding or let's display parameters first. Okay. I need a breaking breaking torque. Number of wheels. And most important, stopping distance. Let's move it closer. After finishing of the parameters binding, we could try to evaluate again. Okay, looks nice, green. So, and you see the stopping distance is automatically calculated now. So, 
my let's try the 60 miles per hour again oops okay so stopping stopping distance is, is 147 which is uh, less than required 150 if we change uh, equal weight to 2300 stopping distance is too long and also we can see that the vehicle weight requirement is not satisfied but let's say if we add additional uh, uh, stopping surface like uh, additional wheels to, to our vehicle we could see that then uh, stopping requirement is satisfied but still the weight requirement is not satisfied so basically we can do uh, whatever what if analysis here with the system design find some optimal values and uh, and check if everything is green all the requirements are satisfied and then we could update our design values and we could save uh, all all the values from the analysis tool from the runtime values to to the default values okay I, i'll show you how to use uh, how to easily create a different system configurations and evaluate different system designs Uh, let's create a new package in our model for, for the design alternatives. And let's create an instance table. So we will use a UML SysML instance specifications as our initial to keep our uh, initial values of, of our design parameters, so uh, different configurations of our vehicle. Let's drop our vehicle under test as a as a type, and you can see that. All, all main uh, properties are automatically displayed as columns in this table. If I click Add New here, I create a new uh, instance specification, so a new instance of the vehicle, and some default values are used. So uh, I can easily create any number of those uh, instances, with, and, and I can change values here directly in the table. Also, I can select or hide any columns, so I don't care about the stopping time this time. And I want to see uh, if my uh, stopping distance constraint is satisfied and my weight constraint is satisfied. Okay, let's create a number. Vehicle. Five wheels, but uh, yeah, there. and just click evaluate button or evaluate selected row for one or evaluate for the entire table. And all the right values are automatically calculated. So you can see that for this, let's call this uh, equal one design equal two. So for our uh, uh, for vehicle one design, the stopping distance is uh, 179, and the stopping distance constraint is not. 
uh, stopping distance requirements are not satisfied, you see the false value. Uh, weight is okay. And for our uh, another design with five wheels, uh, you, you see that uh, the stopping distance requirements are satisfied, but, uh, but the weight requirement is false. It's not satisfied. This table, this uh, tabular representation is already a pretty good uh, report, the replication report, but we could make it even uh, nicer by adding uh, colors and additional properties. Okay, let's go to analysis diagram again. So for example, now I see if my requirement is satisfied or not, but I cannot see what, what is the what was uh, the required speed for required stopping distance for this particular initial speed? And uh, as you remember, in our uh, function, we we have this uh, required distance property here, and it it is it is not used, so it's it's not recorded. So let's show this required distance property parameter here and let's create new value property in our analysis context let's call this uh, required stop distance and bind it to this parameter. Also we have a verdict which is boolean and, and we see true or false in, in, in our uh, uh, result table but it would be uh, more visual if we could uh, represent that uh, uh, using a sysml verdict uh, uh, verdict as a pass or fail value and uh, and uh, different colors so let's let's use let's show this boolean parameter And I have a boolean to a verdict converter. So if, if it's true, we show it as a uh, as a pass, and if, if it's false, it, it it fails. So pass it to this converter. Create new value property. For, uh, for the stopping distance verification and let's use a seasonal verdict kind as a type it provides inconclusive pass fail or error uh, values Now go back to the table and customize columns and let's pick verification uh, and require stopping distance columns here. Okay. 
and evaluate the same uh, design instances again. Okay, and you see my values now, my, my required distance is visible here. So let's move it near uh, actual stopping distance. And so we can see the actual stopping distance and the required stopping distance. And then stopping distance verification status. So you see that stopping distance is 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 more than required. So my uh, verification failed. So requirement is not satisfied. In 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 my second configuration, you see that this stopping distance is less than required. So my requirement passed and we can export those reports into HTML or Excel spreadsheet into HTML web page or, or spreadsheet That's my table in a spreadsheet. And you see how a report has a green or green and red colors for the verification status. Okay, so you can create any number of those alternatives. You can use a special code or plugins or scripts to generate all possible combinations. So for example, if you have uh, catalogs of the parts or you have different subtypes of the, of the, of the subsystems, for example, like a, you have a diesel or gas engine or, or different types of, of wheels or, or braking subsystems, you can, you can generate uh, multiple combinations of those parts and uh, hundreds or even thousands of instances uh, in in this table and and still press in press evaluate and and evaluate all those alternative designs in one click and, and generate report find the, the design with all green values and then for example in, in this case my vehicle uh, okay let's create a, a Another instance, so all, all my requirements are satisfied. So, evaluate. Okay. My requirement is satisfied, and weight requirement is satisfied. So, this design. Uh, satisfies all my requirements, I can right click, go to tools and save to defaults. I can feed my best uh, values back to my vehicle structure into my default design. And you can see that the, the, the white uh, and other parameters are written to my design. That's it for today. See you in our next webinars and demos. Bye.